Hello, I'm Neil Finn and I'm here today to talk about five records I love with the good folk at northerntransmissions.com. All right. So what might be your first album? Well, um, on the occasion of being the year where we were shocked and saddened to see David Bowie uh, depart this mortal coil, I would like to give a big nod to the album Hunky Dory, which was a formative record for me as a songwriter um, back in, I guess, 72-ish, 71, 72-ish. And I was just starting to become obsessed with uh, playing my guitar, learning songs, at the time, I think, I mean, sure, the Beatles had some extraordinary songs in terms of chords and uh, movement and atmosphere, but uh, Bowie was doing something yet again, and um, when you look at a song like Life on, Life on Mars or Quicksand, uh, his use of diminished chords and, and the structures of his songs were so extraordinary, um, still are to this day, make you aware that most songs that we hear are extremely unsophisticated, and his were extremely sophisticated, but somehow all incredibly hooky, and I don't know how he did it. His words were um, quite mysterious and enigmatic, uh, to the extent that when you think you know Bowie's songs, you start to sing them and you always fall apart around the second verse, and there's some line that, you, uh, that just doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a very, very powerful influence on me at the time. Still stands up as a songwriter, songwriter's record. Um, beautifully arranged, beautifully recorded, yeah. Did you ever play any covers uh, of your brothers or on your own? I have sung a few of the songs on Hunky Dory, um, Quicksand in particular, um, Kooks just the other night in Telluride Festival um, in the Rocky Mountains. We were asked to do a small tribute to Bowie. We sang, um, is that Thunder? Goodness, uh, could be. Uh, we sang Kooks, my son and I, and we did Starman. Those are beautiful. I mean, Starman and uh, Quicksand are beautiful. Quicksand has always been a favorite. Me too. Yeah, it's a gorgeous song. But like I said, it's not easy to just launch into if you don't know the words. There's always a lot more words than you thought. Yeah, and they aren't the ones you thought. They no, were. and they're very strange. Yeah, sometimes very strange words. And one day, lying what else? In what the else? What else? Of your um, well, I'd like to give a nod to Neil Young. Uh, the album after the gold rush which was uh, another formative record I guess I'm at this stage just thinking about my um, exploration discovery of music when I was around 14 learning how to play guitar learning how to write songs these were the touchstone records um, and certainly Neil Young has continued to be one of my favorite artists um, throughout because of his willfulness his uh, well his extreme musicality obviously a great writer a um, very evocative voice, um, but uh, in particular his determination to do his own thing. And at the stage he'd been in a successful band, which he would have, you know, a lot of people would have thought that was the place to be. Cosby Stills, Nash and Young, but he went solo and he did it magnificently. That album in particular was on high rotation when I was 14, so. Uh, and every song on it really, I've got to say, there's hardly any duds. Maybe, um, Cripple Creek Ferry, is that on that one or Harvest? Maybe there's always a couple, there's always a song about his dog or right, uh, yeah. that maybe is slightly weaker than the rest, but, <laughs> but I applaud his sentiment. He was also uh, like a sound, he, he's a, like a genius. Kind of, he's, yeah, well his, yeah. He, he's he, an inventor, like of, of, um, isn't he? Like with sound, like the wireless and like the well, trains and sound. And, Neil, he's got a great interest in model trains, which I, you know, I think is fantastic anyway. As a, and cars, um, not that I have similar interests, but he's also obsessed with the the difference between analog and the sound of good digital. And of course, he invented a whole well, he and his team invented a whole new uh, form of digital um, listening. Um, with his, I'm not sure whether it's become um, a, a major force in the in sound but but I love again I love his willfulness 
yeah. um, and I admire and respect his attraction to analog sound because it really is. We've got somebody coming through the door there with, with looking like a cut. They got scissors. Is that rain I can hear? I believe it is. I'm hearing it loud. That's a pouring rain. Yeah. Um, well, that's actually nice to break up the sound of the air conditioning, isn't it? Yes. And there's the distant sound of drums, which sound like thunder. <laughs> so this is a very evocative interview. I'm filling it in. Yeah. But yeah, so Neil Young, yeah, formative influence. And, um, you know, great respect. Oh, one more then, okay. Um, well, let's do something that's relatively contemporary. Um, I was lucky enough to play some gigs a while ago under the banner Seven Rules Collide with, Eddie, with Ed and Phil from Radiohead, who I met when they were a very young band playing bridge backstage at, the, um, at a festival in Europe, um, which is a classic thing for a Radiohead to be doing, isn't it, really? Playing bridge backstage while everyone was out, was indulging themselves in, in, in drugs and wild, crazy shit. Um, but they've always been, they've been very good friends for a long time and um, making extraordinary music for a long time. Um, really, in terms of bands and longevity, you couldn't think of a better, um, a better example. And they agonise over the music making, and sometimes it's not easy, and as was the case with this album um, in Rainbows, uh, which I think was a very difficult album for them to make, but sounds effortless and is actually... I've got favourites amongst all the other albums, favourite songs, but that is, as an album, my favourite Radiohead record. And, to me is a confirmation of the fact that uh, music doesn't have to be easy to make. It can be extremely difficult and if you're chasing the right things, you're not just um, chasing um, vanities or flippant desires, you're chasing the essence of good music, then you get there in the end and they are a great example of that because um, it's been agony for them <laughs> at times. But um, so many great songs on that record and such a sense of atmosphere and sense of themselves and they were pushing their own boundaries at a time when most bands would be encouraged to be taking on stadiums, they were quite content with arenas, and so they should be. I'm sorry that it's been short, but it's okay. I think we do have... Have you got one more interview? Yeah. Uh, one more record? Okay, one more. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about some, a local young fellow from New Zealand who's a friend of Liam, my son's, and Elroy's. His name is Conan Moccasin, and his album... Um, I, actually, both albums are really good, but Forever Dolphin Love, uh, is an album which he made on his own at his home in, in Hawke's Bay uh, with his mum and dad in, in residence. Um, his mum produced it more or less, or at least gave him some good feedback. And it's gone around the world and it's one of the strangest, um, wooziest, um, glorious records of the last five or ten years, I think. And he is uh, an amazing guitar player who are uh, continually looking for something original and um, that doesn't happen very often, so yeah, it's Conan Moccasin. And his vocal style. Very strange, very an acquired taste in a way. Uh, he sounds like a small child or a fairy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. No worries. Good luck. Thank you.